Everyone, welcome back. Hope everyone's doing well. As always, if you love the Second Amendment, if you believe that your rights should not be infringed on, make sure you subscribed. Also, big thanks to the sponsor of today's video, USCCA. If you carry a firearm, they have some great online training, some great benefits, and self-defense protection. So if you carry a firearm, it's something to check out. I'll leave a link below the video. And thanks again to USCCA for sponsoring this video. So I wanted to do a quick recap as far as what happened with Hunter Biden. Kind of like we talked about in a previous video, there's a long list. And when I say long, it's a laundry list of things that he's done that has been against the law. Whether it's been crack smoking, whether it's been crack smoking and holding a gun, whether it's been hanging out with hookers, smoking crack and holding a gun. And then whether it's been smoking crack while holding a gun, while with hookers, while filming it for the world to see and then putting it on the internet. You can't do that. Some pretty major stuff there. Now, if you're a judge and you know that information and someone is charged with the gun crime, it's a felony, what do you do? You say, oh man, you know what, he, um, he deserves some leniency. I can tell you right now, if it was me, if it was you, and we were charged with the same crime, and it was public knowledge about all the other stuff that was involved with us, we would be getting the max, no doubt, which is 10 years and a fine of $250,000. But let's dive deeper into what exactly happened with this. For those of you who don't remember, back in 2018, he had a little scuffle with his wife or his girlfriend at the time, and she got mad and didn't trust him or whatever, so she took his pistol, and she threw it in a trash can across the street from high school in front of a supermarket. What? <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, what a loser. So then the Secret Service got involved. They went and collected the gun. And there were no charges for five years. Right off the bat, that's like, oh, okay. From a group of people who talk all day about gun control. No charges for five years? I mean, we talk all day about the amount of kids that are being killed from gun violence, that are suffering from gun violence. I mean, think about that for a second. Joe, hey, Joe, stop saying God bless the queen and just listen up for a second. If you're worried about kids being victims of gun violence and you see your son's case, forget your son, you see a random case, you'd probably make a speech about it. We can't have people smoking crack, holding guns, filming it in a hotel room with hookers, and then having his wife dump it in front of a high school. What if there was a mass shooting? I mean, that would probably be word for word what he would say. But no, we live in a country where certain people have more privileges than other people. Let me break this down very simply for whoever's involved in this case and for everyone in general because I think I can bring a little bit of light to what is happening. He got probation, by the way, for the charge that he had. Literally unheard of in a case like this. And when I say a case like this, it's really hard to say like this because I've never heard of anything like this. This is outrageous. It's heinous. He got off because his daddy is the president. Simple as that. Pulled a few favors, oh yeah, yeah, he's sober now. No one cares. No one cares about what he's doing now. People want justice. And they want justice for something that is talked about every single day. If you really believe in gun control, you would be throwing your own son in prison right now if it's really that big of a deal to you. And it is because it comes out of the White House every single day. The Senate should immediately pass, let me say it again, the United States Senate, I hope some are listening, should immediately pass the two House passed bills that close loopholes in the background check system. On the issue of gun violence, let's just be very clear. Um, we are seeing tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. Um, the, the, we've, we are now learning the names of the 10 people in Colorado, including that... that, that T -t Today, Junior! You guys always focus on the what ifs. Well, what if this happens to kids? Well, what if somebody found that pistol in a trash can, crossed the school from a high school, and shot a bunch of kids with it? What if one of the kids found it, had a negligent discharge, and they died from that? We can do what ifs all day because that's what y'all do. But no, 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 probation is good enough. Joe, come here. Let me bring you down to earth for a minute. When you believe in something absolute, like I believe in the Second Amendment, nothing changes your mind on it. There are no exceptions made, there's no, Oh, well, only these types of people can own guns. Oh, well, my son 
is my son and I'm the president, so it doesn't matter what he did with a gun, but I'll hold all of these other people accountable and throw them in prison for it. But not my son. Y'all will have your day. Whoever's the next president or whenever the next Republican president is in there, that will be your day. But what you're doing now is you're proving to America and not the side that matters. We know what your agenda is. It's simply to disarm America. You don't care about gun control. You don't care about how many people are dying from it. You don't care about any of that. You just want to disarm us. But now you're proving to the left, the people who actually want gun control because they're brainwashed by you, that you don't care about it. You're telling everyone, including them, that you do not care about gun control, that your principles, what you believe in, is not absolute.